The 1960s saw the introduction of second generation computers using transistors rather than valves. One of these second generation machines was the Elias 803. Who might have bought a computer like this? Well, this, this particular machine, the Elliott 803, was very popular in universities. And this is the input end? Well, that's right. Programs for the computer were prepared uh, offline, away from the machine, and, and are taped very similar to Colossus. And this punch tape has both the program and the data all on one tape. And could we see it running? Well, yep, I've loaded the program into the uh, reader. Right. We need to go back to the operator's console set the instruction up, ready to read the tape, and now operate, we'll start the tape loading. Now that tape and the data have been loaded into the processor's central uh, memory. Right, okay, so um, where is the central processor? Right, well the central processor is all of these cabinets, all five of the cabinets. Now if I open this one, this is actually the memory cabinet, and this machine's got 4K of core memory. How much power does this machine consume? Hmm? Well, this machine operates at 25 volts DC. And if we look at the power supply, it's taking about 50 amps at the moment. OK, so 50 times 25, about one and a quarter kilowatts. That's right. That's about half an electric fire. And what about the output? We've seen the input. Well, What's outputs we also produce on paper tape. Um, and a machine like this would actually punch the tape for the student. Now that paper tape will be returned back to the student to go back to their offline desk to print their results out. So we've gone full circle. The student starts offline writing the uh, paper tape and then paper tape returned to the student. The student puts the paper tape into the offline reader and gets, gets back results. a print.